Hello and welcome to this short presentation on managing career change focusing on the CV. My name is Lee Martin, I'm the manager and owner of 2J's Training and through all the next 5-10 to 10 minutes we'll just be talking through the key aspects of developing an informative, impactful CV. So let's start by looking at what we actually mean by the CV. CV can have different definitions for different people. Fundamentally, um, the CV should be the story of your life, giving you the opportunity to talk to employers about things that you find important and relevant to the role. However, over time, the CV as a document has been subject to fashion and fads. Historically, it has majored on key things in your career, such as what you've done, the key job titles, dates of roles, responsibilities that you've had, education and training that you've had, and also your hobbies and interests. In fact, these days it's more of a marketing document, giving you the opportunity to put yourself in front of the employer. It's important to put yourself in front of the employer and consider their position. Most recruiters these days are running up to 5 to 10 campaigns at one time. It's important to understand that each campaign will have generated between 30 and 100 applications. As a result of that, most CVs are rejected and placed on the reject pile after only about 30 seconds to a minute. Therefore, your CV has to make an impact straight away. It has to make sure that the recruiter is convinced to take you onto the interview pile. Some key things to consider then. First of all, how long should your CV be? Well, the number of pages is often defined as being two and no more. However, it depends on the situation. Ideally, what you're looking to do is to make it as concise and accurate and relevant to the role as possible. A way of making sure that your CV is as concise and accurate and relevant is following the AIDA principle. This principle comes from the world of marketing. Effectively, the wording stands for A, attract attention with your CV, generate interest, which will hopefully desire and stimulate a call to action, i.e. get you to the interview. So how do we make sure that your CV follows this principle? Well, let's start by looking at your front page. Starting off with the content. The front page should have some key information, such as your contact details, but more importantly, a summary of yourself, the key headlines, the key skills and achievements that you've actually classified against the role. Actually, this is quite the hardest part to do when compiling a CV for the first time, so it's often best left to the end. Instead, let's still, looking at the first page, move on to key skills. Your key skills should fall into three main areas, namely that of management skills, which can include things like people, financial and projects that you've been involved with, details of your personal skills, which again can include things such as communication skills, negotiation, influencing, and also skills that are specific for the role that you're going for. These are generally technical specific and important to the key aspects of the job. So what should the key skills statements look like? Basically there are a couple of principles to be considered. Understand that bold statements carry little weight, but don't be too wordy. Excellent people management skills, for example, doesn't go into an depth. You need to give the employer an understanding of specifically what you've done. There's also the rule of six. This basically says that less than three key skills and you'll effectively look underskilled. However, placing more than six and you look like you're boasting or you're overqualified. You need to be conscious of that the skills you identify in your CV will be questioned at interview stage. So make sure you're only putting stuff that you are comfortable and have experience in. Still sticking with the front page, after key skills, you need to list your key achievements. Think about times when you might have done some of the following. It's often difficult to list down key achievements, so take some time before writing the CV, 
with a blank piece of paper just to list down what you feel and believe are your key achievements. Also remember to keep it relevant to the role that you're actually applying for. Still struggling? Well, it may be worth actually asking friends, family or colleagues to give you a pointer or a starter just to help you see things from their point of view and that may be sufficient to help you list some key achievements. Having identified what your key skills and achievements are, how do you actually go about writing the key achievements? Well, the best way to do it is in a star story. The fundamentals here talk about defining the situation, explaining the task that you were given, your approach and the end result. The more quantifiable the result, the better. And as a rule of thumb, you should only have two to three achievements on your CV. Still not quite sure how to write that? Well, let's give us an example. The situation, the task, the approach and the results. As you can see, slightly more than bullet pointed and giving the employer sufficient information to understand what happened and what your role in that process was. Having defined the key skills and the key achievements, we're still on the first page. Do you remember we talked about the personal summary? Well, let's just review that for a minute. Remember, the personal summary should be that headliner, the headliner that will catch the imagination and the interest of the reviewer. It's going to be the first thing they see. It should be about a paragraph of no more than about three sentences and detail who you are, what kind of person you are and what you're looking for. Try and avoid cliches such as a good team player, a good sense of humour. If the employer is seeing a hundred CVs with these same cliches over and over again, you can imagine they're not going to take much stock by them. Think about the organisation that you're actually working for or going to work for and think about what actually drives them. Include a reference to that key driver. The best way to think about the personal summary is often referred to as the elevator task. Imagine you're attending the company for the interview. Imagine you get into the lift for your interview on the fourth floor and as you do so the CEO of the company is in the elevator. They ask you why you're there and you explain. They then say to you, okay, if you can convince me between now and the third floor where I get off that you're the best person for the job, I'll let HR know and let them give it to you. What would be your response? That's what your personal summary should be detailing. That key 30 second long explanation as to why you're the right person for the role. Make it concise, make it to the point, but make it accurate. Okay, let's assume that we've completed the first page now with your personal summary, your key skills and your key achievements. What you can include on the second page is some information about your career history. This is where you're looking to list all the roles you have completed. These should be done in reverse order with your most recent role first, ensuring that you have accurately reflected the dates and role titles. The level of detail should reduce as you progress backwards. Employers only are really interested in the roles that you've done most recently. List the responsibilities which are relevant for the role that you're going for and those that appear to carry most weight if you do have gaps in your career, think about how you're going to account for them. Some gaps may actually have seen you acquire skills and knowledge and expertise that are relevant for the role. So don't think that just because you were not employed that you can't detail your experiences gained. Having given details of your past roles, Another area that you may wish to include on your CV is that of your education and qualifications. Basically again making sure that they are relevant to the role that you're going for. There is no point in listing non-academic qualifications which are nothing to do with the role whatsoever and don't add value to your application. So make sure that you think about this very carefully and apportion the space and time to the CV accordingly. You may have noticed that we have left some things out. These days, your hobbies and your interests are not 
as relevant to employers as historically CVs were required. These days employers are looking more about you as the person and to see whether you have the right skills and abilities to fit the role. Your personal interests outside of work can come across through your key achievements and through your personal summary. For more information on how we may be able to help you with your CV writing then contact us at info at 2js.co.uk. We hope you found this useful and we wish you the best of luck in your CVs and future applications.